Before we begin, it's expected that you already have FL Studio installed. In the description of this video, you'll find a zip file called Everything Needed FL, and inside that you'll have everything you need for this, which is mainly just ASL Link Pro. All we got to do is run this installer. For me, it said it's already installed, but you know, for you it won't. And when it gets to the end, run ASL Link Pro Tool. Go ahead and uncheck that. Make sure it's not checked. Click Finish. After that, you're going to want to run the patcher. Click 64-bit and apply it. Now we can move on to setting up the template. If you already have FL installed, you can just run this. Now you can see I have all of my stuff here, but the problem is there's really no audio going through. This is because we need to go to the audio settings. And the first thing I'm going to do is set the sample rate to 48. After that, we're going to grab ASL Link Pro as our input device. You're probably going to get a pop-up that looks something like this. And if you have the default install of FL Studio and you have a USB mic, you're going to want to select ASIO for all. Since I don't have a USB mic, I'm going to select my interface. Um, if I'm going to go ahead and put a timestamp at the end of the video that shows you how to do it with a USB mic. You're also going to want to make sure that you click load inside of ASL Link Pro and you find your Link Pro file and then you load Ableton Chat. That way it's routed properly. So I have my Evo selected, but now you can see all this stuff is kind of broken. Uh, easy way to fix that is I'm just going to reload the, uh, the template and now it's fixed it. So now inside of FL we can see we have my microphone which is going through the guitar track. Ignore that because it's on the second channel of my interface. But it's also being sent to these four tracks. And these are all pretty simple. So when you first install ASL Link Pro, it creates a fuckload of inputs and a fuckload of outputs. We're going to make sure that Speaker 01 is both the default device and the default communication device. And we're going to do the same for Mix 01, default communication. And that is tied to game mic. So anything that you want to go to a video game while you're talking, for example, is going to go through that. Anything that you want to go to your headphones is going to go to the headphones track, which is right here. And that goes to your headphones, obviously. And anything that you... Now, that if we're talking about the interface, that's assuming you have your headphones plugged into your interface. Uh, as for this one here, recording OBS, this obviously goes to OBS. And to, to set that up, we're going to want to go to OBS, go into the settings, audio, and make sure that our microphone device is Mix03. Finally, we have our Discord microphone. This is what outputs from FL into the input of Discord, which means inside of Discord, in our voice and video settings, we're going to want Mix02 to be the input and Speaker02 to be the output. So when we go to Discord, we can see our input device is set to default. We're going to want to scroll down until we see Mix02, and then our output should be speakers02. You'll also see that you have a browser track and a Spotify track. The browser obviously assumes that you're going to want your browser audio to come through, so we're going to go to YouTube. We're going to open up the sound settings on Windows, app volume preferences, and we can just play a video. I'm going to select speakers03 as the output device of Google Chrome. You can see if I play the music, now I'm going to go through the browser track. On top of that, if we want Spotify audio to come through, we're going to play a song on Spotify, and we're going to change that output to speakers of 4. That's going to put it through the Spotify track. One important thing to note is when you're routing this stuff, these knobs down here are what controls where it goes. So on my guitar track, for example, if I don't want people on Discord to hear my guitar, I'm going to turn down the Discord knob so that they will no longer hear it. If I don't want them to hear my browser audio, I'll turn it down on that as well. You know what I mean? So control those knobs. Uh, what sucks about FL, and this is why I recommend Ableton, is to be able to control those, you have to go click on that track. And if you want to put it back to zero, you can't double click. You got to right click and click reset. Now, if you are one of the misfortunate souls who has to use ASIO Link Pro and ASIO for all, with a dog shit USB microphone, then you will have to do this. So, device, none. Obviously, we want that to be ASO Link Pro. And inside of this little select ASO driver, we're going to select ASO for all V2. Now, this is the part where if you had a microphone that uh, could have its own in and out, like you can plug the headphones into it, that you have a huge benefit from that. 
because you have one device clock, it means you'll have a much lower latency and much less chance of crackling. Now, if you don't have that option, what you'll have to do is find whatever thing your microphone is. Let's say, for example, my Evo 4 is not my device and I have a Realtek microphone for whatever reason. Well, I'm going to turn on Realtek and if Realtek has an output part, I'm going to turn that off because the only goal is to have the input. And let's pretend for a second that this Wave Sound Grid device here actually says SteelSeries and it's my headset. Then I'm going to turn off the input of that and only enable the output. This is an example. You won't have the error, the error signals. I, I'm having to make it up as I go here. Now, since I have one device, which is my Evo 4, I'm just going to select that and use my microphone R as the input and the loopback part as the output. Uh, it'll go the same for you. If you have a main output, for example, then you're going to want to use that. Like say you have a Blue Yeti, you only select the in and the out. And it's really that simple. After that, if you experience crackling on the very root, you know, the undrop down area of the device, you're going to want to turn the buffer size up or down based on your latency and your crackling. You're also going to want to make sure that you click load inside of ASL Link Pro and you find your Link Pro file and then you load Ableton Chad. That way it's routed properly. After that, you're all done.